Hey guys, Matthew here, and it's been about a week and a half since I last updated you guys on Project Predicting Profitability, so it's about time we look at another update. Now, a lot of things have been farmed in the last week and a half, literally thousands of maps and hundreds and hundreds, even thousands of bosses have been farmed among, uh, and invitations as well. So there's a lot of new data, a lot of things to cover. Now, this is actually going to be the final update uh, before the actual official release of the, the entirety of the project when it's going to be completely done. So we've pretty much, we're reaching the very end in terms of what's left to actually farm and what's left to actually test. Uh, but the thing is, I haven't set up anything that is automatically updated yet in the Casual Exile document. So first off, we're going to look at what we've farmed so far, and then we're going to look at the way that I've implemented so far and what it's going to look like a little bit later on. So we've done essences. Uh, basically, we've done essences with and without corruption. Uh, we've done strong boxes. Uh, we've done metamorphs. Uh, we've done blight for both rusted and gilded. We've done harbingers with and without the sextant. We've done a uh, heist with and without the sextant. Uh, and what I mean by that is farming the heist on the map device. Or sorry, on the atlas. I'm not talking about heist contracts themselves. Uh, we've done uh, bestiary. Uh, based on the type of, uh, of beast that you're going for. We've done Expedition Alk and Go. We've done Expedition with Winged and also the Sextant for 100% more Runic Monsters. Uh, so those have both been done. Uh, we've done Bridgestones, which in, in regards to that, I'm not talking about the Bridgestones themselves. I'm talking to farming four Bridgestones using the Sextants to force on either Chiela or Ulnithol Bridgestones. Uh, we've done Legion with both uh, Rusted and with Gilded and with Sextants. Uh, we've done um, we've done the invitations for the Shaper, the Elder, the Conquerors, which is the Elder Slayer, and the Hidden. Now, what's left to do here is basically the uh, Forgotten and the Feared. Now, there's a bit of a problem with both of those. Uh, so, the first problem when it comes to the uh, the the uh, Forgotten invitation is that each of the Forgotten maps or the synthesized maps can basically roll inside the map. Right? When you actually go inside the map, there's going to be modifiers that are rolled that are completely random. And the rewards are also completely random. So there's nothing that is consistent about the loot in there. Not only that, the loot that is dropped by the bosses, the rings spe specifically, right? The uh, circle of guilt, circle of nostalgia, etc., etc. Those circle rings, uh, they have tons of RNG as well because they pretty much all have one combination, which is good, which is buff effect and damage while affected by X Herald. Um, the problem is, is that everything else is basically worthless. Uh, so there's so much RNG involved here that it's impossible to basically give you guys an ap accurate representation of what you should expect to make. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to work it backwards. Uh, sorry, backwards. I'll be showcasing what is the minimum amount of currency that you will lose if you were to not get anything other than the things that are consistent. So for example, in this invitation, it would be obviously the Maven fragments. It would be uh, you know, maps, stuff like that. Uh, so that's all that's going to be included. So it's going to look kind of bad, but that's not because it's actually bad. It's just because it's impossible to give you guys an accurate representation. It's kind of the same thing for the feared because not only the feared is uh, the invitation itself is quite random, but also the actual bosses leading to the invitations are also in some cases quite random, uh, or in some cases just a complete loss of currency. Like Shula, especially later on in the league, is just negative currency always. Or for example, Uber Aziri, always negative currency, right? Uh, so it'll look bad, but in reality, it's because it's impossible to give an accurate representation of what's actually consistent. All right, next, uh, we've done Delirium Orbs. Every single Delirium Orb was tested, or at least the ones that were worthwhile testing. I think the only ones that we haven't done is pretty much like armor, armorers, weapons, uh, talismans, a couple of like jewelry, stuff like that. Uh, but all of the good ones, or even the ones that were potentially good were all tested so things like fine things like skittering uh well i should say currency you know metamorph uh scarabs uh harbinger all, all the other ones uh as you, you'll see later on in the casual exile uh the heist blueprints we started on that that's one that has taken a little bit longer because not everybody likes heisting i personally don't like it uh either uh so we want to get the the, the actual data for about a thousand gems found which is around 200 or so uh gem blueprints to be able to see if there is any correlation between the drop rates in the blueprint and the weightings when you are to use uh, a primary or secondary lens on the gem if there is that makes it very easy to actually do the math if there isn't uh then we're going to be in a situation where honestly it's just going to be impossible to tell 
uh, sadly enough. Uh, contracts, now we've done the main ones, the ones that people mostly care about, uh, but the person who was farming them seems to have kind of just stopped, given up, uh, given up, which is completely understandable because, man, I personally wouldn't want to farm contracts either, uh, but we've done uh, hundreds of lockpicking, hundreds of deception, and uh, a couple hundred uh, counter thaumaturgy as well, which are kind of the main ones, uh, but there is still like perception, which I would like to go over, and potentially one or two other ones, uh, but we'll see if we can get to that. Uh, now, boss rushing is a strategy which is very popular right now. The thing about it, though, is we don't actually have to test anything because all of the weightings for each of the maps that you get uh, are all very consistent. And for things like the uh, invitation drop rates uh, for the new bosses, those are also known, right? It's every 28 maps. Um, so because of that, we actually don't have to do any testing. We can math it out um, without anything, uh, without ever stepping feet into a map, which is good. Uh, now, simulacrums is another one which is way too much, there's too much variance. One of the only things that is consistent when it comes to leveling, or sorry, currency and simulacrums is leveling gems, right? The problem is literally everything else is sort of the same thing as going back to the uh, forgotten invitation, right? Uh, is the, are you going to get a simulacrum where you get a bunch of scarabs, or are you going to get a bunch of just garbage rewards such as talisman, right? Uh, so there's hard, there's very, very high RNG based on simulacrums. Uh, so one thing about simulacrums, though, is that they're always profitable, especially when they're as cheap as they are this league. They are guaranteed profit no matter what. So there's not really anything to test there. Like the goal of the project, and I think that's something a lot of people didn't really understand, is that the goal of this entire project is to help the people who are struggling with making any amount of currency. It's not to try to tell you guys what to do that is the absolute best because the thing is the things that are the absolute best such as you know simulacrum farming such as you know triple beyond giga juicing such as for example delirium mirror farming those strategies are always good no matter what um and how good they are is going to depend on well of course your character your speed how efficient you are stuff like that uh but the people who I'm really targeting with this project is is the people who like the people who are like, oh, I've never had more than 10x in the league. I play every day. I've never had a headhunter for like the last three leagues, right? Like those are the people who this uh, this project is mostly aimed at. And I think we did an extremely good job at uh, at uh, finding out the data and and basically targeting those people when we head into the casual exile document here. Uh, Siri Exarc, I did a, uh, I think I've done 120 or so. Nicholas did about 120 as well. Uh, so I, we only needed to know the the drop rate of the bad uniques because we uh, we actually got a thousand of the Eater of Worlds done by Spicy Sushi. Uh, so shout out to him for helping out with that. And because because we already knew the drop rate of the uh, Forbidden Jewels, we I just wanted to know the drop rate of the bad uniques because they don't really matter. They're worthless. Um, but also I wanted to see the drop rate of say like the amulet and stuff like that. Uh, and even just 200 kills is enough to see that. Uh, next uh, is Maven. Now, Don't Rage Quit Bro has done or is currently doing a thousand of them. And there's another dude called uh, Toxic, which is also doing a thousand of them. So we're going to have about 2,000 Mavens worth of data. And you get a an Awakened Gem almost every single time, about 80% of the time or so. Uh, so we are going to have a ton of actual uh awakened gem to uh to go through uh to verify the, the the drop rates of that so i'm super super happy and super pleased with how that is turning out so far uh and then the cyrus uh shinitai a guy from the community did over 300 of them and then uh, a bunch of different people did about 50 to 100 to 150 each uh totaling out uh, totaling out to roughly uh, i think we're that's not actually up to date we're we're over 800 right now uh, so I want to get to about a thousand Cyrus is done. I think that's going to give us a good idea. Now, uh, Awakened Gems are extremely rare from Cyrus, even with the uh, the node, right? It's like a 10% flat rate or something. And uh, obviously, the odds of getting anything decent in terms of Awakened Gems is very bad. Uh, but all of the other loot still is pretty decent, uh, except for obviously like the helmet and stuff like that. Uh, and then there's going to be a sextant based strategy, but that's that's a different story. And then the material sheet is also done. So look at what that looks like. So basically, for those who haven't been following uh, this project or the Casual Exile document, link in the description uh, for this. You'll Maybe if you have an older copy, you'll want to make a new one. Um, but right now, what's going on is essentially I've been making these charts where basically you're going to be able to see the profitability of each of the things in the game. Uh, so we're doing bossing, we're doing, for example, the Bridgestone strategy, Expedition, you know, with the Rusted I can go versus the, the Winged and the Sextant, uh, stuff like that. 
Now, these are not up to date right now. So, well, they're not automatically up to date is what I should say. I've been going in basically daily and changing the value based on what we do have, which is automatically updated in my database. Uh, but on the release, when this project is completely over and it's the final update, like I said, around probably the 1st of April will be the, uh, the actual uh, final video about this project and where I'll have implemented all of the automatically updating values. All of these are going to automatically update based on the current time in the league. Uh, so you'll know if you open up, say, the betrayal sheet and you see that T4 Ashling, Ashling is like 150C, uh, early on in the league that might not be as worth doing as right now when it's like over 400 chaos right which is like 2.5x or so for Ashling, 2.53x even sometimes 4x for the people who have a lot of uh, rep on tft right so you'll be able to open this up and at all times in the league you'll see the value of each and every one of the mechanics based on previous testing now this is unfortunately not future proof and what i mean by that is that if ggg did some stealth nerfs which are more than just numerical nerfs on the atlas there's a chance that some of this data is going to become irrelevant now, GG is not known to uh, to temper uh, to, uh, to tinker around too much. Sorry, with uh, actual drop rates of stuff, uh, they really don't do that very often. Uh, and if they do, hopefully they let us know on the Alice, so then we can just look at our results and basically multiply them, be it positively or negatively, or divide them, if you will, uh, with the new values and that's going to be very easy to get another a new understanding of the profitability without actually having to go back and do like these thousands of maps uh, because for example the invitations each of the invitations was something like um between four and eight hundred maps done to do uh you know anywhere between 100 to 200 invitations of each of the sets right stuff like that uh and and we're still doing more of course with the community and stuff uh so we want to get a very big sample size for everything to make sure that you know it's it's very accurate because of course you can get lucky you can get unlucky but as long as uh, as you're doing enough of them uh you're going to get closer and closer to the actual true average of whatever the weighting that you decided on each of those things uh, so yeah, that's pretty much what I've gotten so far in, in the latest update. So there's a lot to go through. Obviously, I, I we went through the list. I'm not going to go through the profitability of each and every one of those things. That's something that you can easily do by simply open up the, uh, opening the, the casual exile document and making a copy of it. Now, when I actually go through and make the automatically updating prices, you guys are going to also need to basically, I think, make like like a follow of the document uh because if you make a copy i don't think that it's it's going to automatically update the prices right so unless you want to have to make a copy every other day or whatever uh you'll probably want to um uh, basically also get the automatically updating prices now i'll write a guide when i actually make the video on how to uh sorry when i make the video the final video of the project uh, I'll write a guide or in the video I'll explain how to go about setting up your spreadsheet so that it updates at the same rate at which the actual uh, casual exile document is going to update uh, because otherwise like I said there can easily be some issues where the data is going to be outdated if you're not you know constantly remaking a copy with the new data um, so that's pretty much it for the update on the project uh, again, there's a ton of stuff in there. We've definitely been grinding out a ton, not just myself, but the community as a whole has been uh, just pulling through. And uh, yeah, it's it's become pretty crazy the amount of stuff that we have documented. Uh, so really, really happy with how the project turned out. Super hyped uh, for the actual official release with the up, uh, automatically updating data. So hopefully you guys are also looking forward to that. That's pretty much all I have for, for this update. Before I go, as always, I want to say a huge thank you to my supporters. So, Risk Girl, Brandon, welcome back, Thomas Mass, uh, Nate, the Great Master, Alex, Tim, Mercury, Johnny, as well as Novgar, Solomonk, Exo, Giracosa, and Bizen. Anybody else who supported me in the past and anybody else who wishes to remain anonymous. If you think that we've missed some, uh, some things uh, in terms of uh, acquiring the data, right? If there's some strategies that you guys think I have missed, feel free to let me know in the description and I'll see if it's possible to get them added uh, both to the to the casual exile document and of course to the automatically updated pricing uh, when it comes to that. So otherwise, that'll be Matthew signing out. Until the next one, peace.